in the dark shadows, in the white cold. Fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes. The order of the abracast. We are the brave and the bold. The abracast. Occult, history, conspiracy, and violence. Welcome to the Inter Sanctum. The Inter Sanctum, that's cool. <laughs> I'm uh, John Towers, and this is Red Horse Radio, the Abercast. So, um, this is the exclusive part of the show. <clears throat> the, uh, this is the exclusive por- portion of Red Horse Radio where we expound, elaborate on the stickier, weirder, or the occult ideas brought up on the main show. So, uh, this episode is companion with, uh, 181, which was Dan Foydick, and uh, the topic of sex magic came up. So I thought I would just jump on the Abercast here uh, quickly and uh, talk about uh, sex magic, the sacred booty. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Well, sex is, should always have been um, sacred. Uh, in Gnosticism, her- hermetical... Uh, Gnosticism, man and uh, woman started out as one creature and was divided <laughs> when uh, God made, you know, man and woman. So think of like, think of a, like a being <laughs> with boobs, both sets of like genitalia, four eyes, two mouths, four noses, four nostrils. Uh, and that was the human being. And, uh, that then God se- separated us, the feminine side and the masculine side. This all has to do with dualism, the material world versus the spiritual world. Um, and so sex was, has always kind of been like about getting back to that. Like <laughs> it's about as close as we're going to get to becoming one person. So, um, it's about the reunification. Uh, the two becomes one, like the like the Tool song says, and uh, you know, breathing in you in unison, and um, you know, becoming you know that one person. You complete me. No, you complete me. No, Smoochie, you totally complete me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but as far as how it came up with uh, Dan. How Sex Magic came up with Dan. Uh, We were talking more about the Ordo Templi Orientis uh, kind of tradition of sex magic. Aleister Crowley was a member of the Ordo Templi Orientis, or the OTO, uh, which just is the, it's the Order of the Eastern Star, which sounds creepy. Um... Sorry, my mic is a little bit higher than normal. Fucking everything up. So, Aleister Crowley divulged the secrets of of sex magic. And he said, Crowley said that uh, sex is the ultimate magical um, power in the universe. And uh, he, uh, this is either, this is right around the time he put out the Book of Lies. Um, He noted three types of sex magic. Uh, He noted... Masturbatory is uh, kind one, I guess, sort one. Masturbatory, uh, heterosexual, uh, sex magic, and anal intercourse. Now, note that he did not say he said heterosexual, but when he got to anal sex, he didn't say homosexual. He said anal uh, intercourse. Uh, a lot of people think that Crowley was probably gay. Um, and that he 
carried around a lot of weird kind of guilt about it. <clears throat> and he was married, I think twice. And he had, uh, his, uh, muse. He had a couple of ladies that he called his scarlet ladies. And, uh, he would take one of them in particular and, uh, evoke some kind of extra dimensional being into her and then sit there and write everything she talked about real weird real weird but um he kind of to sum up this uh this anal intercourse section of sex magic he thought like the dirtier the act was the more depraved i guess the act was uh the more power that could kind of be sorted out uh from it and he had uh, you know, his big like motto, <laughs> you know, the most evilest man in America or whatever he, in the world, in the beast. And he had this motto, you know, any Jay Z fan knows it nowadays is do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. And, um, you know, that ties, that ties right into this, uh, uh, this thing, um, you know, of, uh, you know, heteros, <laughs> actually all three of them. <laughs> Um, you know, do what thou wilt. You want to jerk off? Go ahead. Do what thou wilt. You want to get a little bit of booty? Do it and do what thou wilt. If you want to, if you want to be the backdoor man, do it. Um, so really a lot of sex magicians use this thing. Um, uh, this, you know, they focus on or orgasm control, orgasm control, orgasmic control, and also when you start filtering in and you start taking into account like tantrism, uh, which is the Eastern, <clears throat> uh, Eastern kind of art, uh, they get a lot into, uh, ejaculation control or ejacula ejaculatory control. <clears throat> and the sex magician's idea is, <laughs> idea is, um, uh, manifesting intent. You, you are thinking of something in your brain that you're trying to form or manifest. And they kind of think that maybe the, the ego kind of diffuses that as the, your idea goes through <clears throat> your head out into the universe. So they use this, um, uh, act of sex it's they do uh they call it the ego shattering so what they do is they think about something they let all this energy build up and um you know in the monad <laughs> in the fucking kundalini s s wrapping around your 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 spinal column as you know this power is building within you and when you fucking skeet skeet your ego, the ego shatters and your, you know, your inner self or whatever, your soul, whatever is conjuring this intent has a free kind of shot to get out to, to get out to the universe without your ego fucking anything up. So uh, a lot of sex magicians use that. And, um, and the thing that probably a lot of folks is to, are tuning into to listen about is this three fingered lock that I mentioned. <laughs> I'm going to spill the beans here on the Abercast. So what it is, is it's kind of like mandible clawing yourself, right? Um, right. But like between, um, between your donut <laughs> and your scrotum is like this like this pressure point, there's a, like a tube, I don't know the medical fucking term for it, but there's a tube that runs through there. And if you make rigid the, your first three fingers of your right, well, I don't know if you are using black uh, magic, the left hand path or the right hand path, <laughs> you can use either hand. <laughs> so if you're a Democrat, use your left hand. If you're a Republican, use your right hand, make rigid the first three fingers on your hand. And when you start to go, what you do is you, you apply this pressure point right there. And, um, if you do it correctly, uh, no, uh, Jackula will come out and these guys kind of like carry it around with them and let the, let their bodies absorb that energy. And I imagine that this, uh, kind of covers, you know, um, you know, Bible thumpers, you know, like the Lord saith, you know, you can't let your seed uh, hit the soil. Well, this is a way you can have your fucking cake and eat it too, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, yogis could, you know, probably 
<laughs> do this and you know weirdo oto ordo templior orientis you know sex magicians could could do it and save that energy for themselves no reason to waste uh, that kleenex folks <laughs> all right so um there you guys got uh I got a, you got a few minutes here uh, on on sex magic. Um, I am John Towers, and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for joining uh, the newsletter and getting access to this um, getting access to this uh, part of www.stigmatastudios.com website uh, where you get the uh, exclusive Abercast shows. So this is the first one in a really long time and it's the first one that i used as an exclusive section for the show so um i hope you guys like it and save that link uh you know so you can check out the next one and the next one i'll put some old stuff on too um some older abercasts on too so uh there'll be a little bit more esoterica out there uh available on the show so thank you again everybody and this has been the abracast what that what you seek is right under your gnosis your body is your temple so let's make sure you got a badass t-shirt on it variety of cool occult themed t-shirts and other merch like stickers wall art mugs, and more. Visit the storefront on abracast.com. For six years, the world has watched as the Syrian government and its leader, Bashar al-Hassad, has terrorized its own people. It, had mur it has murdered hundreds of thousands and displaced millions. It has broken international law and violated numerous UN resolutions. It has committed criminal acts that has shocked the conscience of humanity. The international community has repeatedly expressed its outrage. The joint investigative mechanism has found beyond any doubt the Syrian regime has used chemical weapons against its own people multiple times. On Tuesday, the Assad regime had launched another chemical attack on civilians, murdering innocent men, women, and children in the most gruesomest ways. Assad did this because he thought he could get away with it. He thought he could get away with it because he knew that Russia would have its back. That changed last night. Nikki Haley, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. <clears throat> Let's get it on! Fire it up! The Abercast, occult, history, oh, yeah, like the way you conspiracy, talk. violence. Society 13 Podcast Network. Redefining Podcasts. Society-13.com. I like to listen. If I ever start a band, I'm going to name it D Deconfliction Notice. <laughs> uh, welcome to Abercast episode 26. Uh, last week we spoke about the golem. So if you're interested in uh, ancient uh, automatons and uh, 
Jewish wizardry, go ahead and check out last week's episode. This week, however, we're going to get two episodes. You know, uh, every once in a while I do um, a bonus episode when um, a current event of note takes place. So that's what this is all about. Uh, you get to listen to um, me break down and analyze the Syrian airstrike flap uh, for today. And then uh, early or later on this week, uh, we have another episode that's going to drop. And I think I'm going to record them back to back. So that second one might get a little blurry towards the end. <laughs> um, so last night. Oh, shit. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say that um, on the Wicked Library this week, uh, my art, I did the cover art for it, for the story. Uh, so you go to, uh, I believe it's just the Wicked Library dot com. <laughs> uh, also go to um, society hyphen 13 dot com uh, to find that and uh, all the great shows that we have here on the society. So, uh, yeah. So last night. <clears throat> I saw a bunch of people like, oh, my God, when the news started out about these handful of Tomahawk missiles. Um, uh, I saw a lot of people freaking out, saying, like, they got to build a bunker and how Trump is going to start World War Three. And they're uh, they were talking all sorts of foolishness. <laughs> and a lot of these guys are, you know, tough guys. They're. You know, they're just being silly. Um, you know, when I say tough guys, I mean, they're guys that like to put on tights and roll around <laughs> in a wrestling ring with other guys. But uh, so I saw a lot of uh, sort of foolishness and people just not understanding the situation. So I thought that I could jump on real quick with some limited notes or whatever and kind of give you my take on what on what's going on with it through the perspective of a guy who draws funny books for a living and throws knives in his backyard <laughs> the knife throwing is going really well i did it like two real good days of training and i get him to stick sometimes even um so what i want you guys to do i want you guys to pour yourself a gin jihad stir it up real good with a tomahawk missile because we're gonna deconstruct and analyze the syrian airstrike on this episode of the abracast <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. The uh, broadcast. Da, 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 the Abra ages begins with the shocking story of Cain and Abel and the journey of violence and revenge spanning thousands of years, following Cain through his cursed life from an ancient invasion of malicious angels to the American Revolutionary War. America. A masterful, compelling journey through time, the ages delves deep into arcane knowledge, myth, and legend. The art is stunning, and the story takes you on a journey where mortals, immortals, angels, and demons are all forced to deal with the folly that is God's creation. It's a beautifully dark and gritty ride through history. This four-part story follows the astrological procession of the ages and how each 2,500-year age parallels major changes in the development of Earth's inhabitants. Cain's blasphemous struggle blasphemous with the divine struggle. and sacred tyrant God tyrant will create God. and crumble no. empires, shape history, empires. and cause a cosmic cataclysm. cataclysm. While the Syrian regime is responsible for the chemical weapons attack, it is not the only guilty party. The Iranian government bears a heavy responsibility. It has propped up and shielded uh, the Syrian brutal dictator for years. Iran continues to play a role in the bloodshed in Syria. The Russian government also bears considerable responsibility. Every time Assad has crossed the line of human decency, Russia has stood beside him. We had hoped that the Security Council would move forward, <laughs> but Russia has made it known, as it has done seven times before, that it would use its veto, once again covering up for the Assad regime. Nikki Haley, ambassador, U.S. ambassador to the U.N. <laughs> so that's kind of, I have in my uh, section here, usually it's called In This Corner, but right now it's called Axis and Allies, because they used to like that game when I was a kid. So basically, uh, the sides that we're talking about in this little, tiny, insignificant, Conflict is uh, us, the United States of America, 
<laughs> then we have the axis. We have uh, Syria, Iran, and Russia. And then in the periphery, we have a couple other uh, belligerents that are in the realm. And that's Chinese, the Chinese, the communist Chinese, and the communist northern North Koreans. <laughs> so they're on the map, too. So these are our three uh, sections of players. Uh, you can't look at one event in a vacuum. So, like I said about these people that were like, "Oh, he's starting World War Three by shooting by shooting up a shitty airport in Syria." <clears throat> like that's not all that fucking happened. All right. <clears throat> uh, so you have to. It's like that old show, The Facts of Life. You got to take the good. You got to take the bad. You take them both, you know the rest. (laughs) So, uh, Syria and the, and gas, they fucking, uh, this Assad loves gassing motherfuckers. I would wonder what Freud would say about that. Um, uh, he, he has a couple different chemical style weapons. One of them, which I think was the one that he used the other night was uh chlorine which really fucking sucks <sighs> god all right um so this is sod guy besides loving to gas people he also likes to take long walks on the beach and he's been in the middle of dealing with this fucking hot ass civil war uh w- the civil war that he's dealing with actually um is an echo or like a ripple it's like a continuation from that Arab, the Arab Spring, that Arab Spring that happened that everyone thought was so great. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, it's not so great. Uh, power vacuums and the people who love to fill them. Okay, so here are the factions that are dealing with, that are in play in the civil in the civil war over there. Because, you know, these guys got to make everything as fucking complicated as possible, so it can't just be the North and the South. You got the government, who is fighting everybody else, and then in some cases, the other factions are also fighting each other and the government. The other factions, you say? There's the Free Syrian Army, <clears throat> which is a, Sunni, a bunch of Sunni Arabs. You have the Syrian Democratic Forces, which are the Kurds, and then you have the Salafi jihadists. And these are the dudes that work with Al Qaeda and ISIS. Uh, these are the real bad, bad guys. Um, okay. So I mentioned that he loves these chemical weapons. His MO, what he does is he drops them and then they all go, what? We didn't drop any chemical weapons. What are you talking about? And when pressed, they will say things like, um, Oh no. Well, one of these other factions had chemical weapons on their base and we bombed their base. Therefore letting all these chemical weapons out. They they got a million of these lines. (laughs) Um, the other civilized countries in Europe and, you know, over here in the, in the, the States, we put pressure on them. Um, we put pressure on them and we look to their allies. We look to Russia saying like, Hey, can you uh, do something about this? Um, one of the things, um, that they, one of the things that they did in like 2015, we're going to get to, we're going to get to it later. We're going to get to it. <laughs> we're going to get to it later, but, um, they were actually like trustees on this um, on this agreement where Russia was supposed to take all take and dispose of all these chemical weapons from from them. Obviously, you could tell that didn't happen, or it happened and they gave them back, or that happened and they got new ones. I mean, whatever. Uh, and yeah, in 2015, they were working on destroying all these chemical weapons. You know, in Russia, chemical weapon destroys you. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> All right, so so a lot of a lot of this stuff is like what would uh Sun Tzu say about this? Like he says that the um war and the and the military is a tool tool of politics. It's it's a weapon to be wielded towards a political end. I'm butchering it and that's not verbatim. <laughs> uh so we look at the we look at the environment what we're talking about. So we have uh, Iran out there trying to develop uh, nuclear material. We have 
Korea out there trying to develop nuclear material and Korea for a large part answers to China, which is we're going to get to the we're going to get to this Chinese the Chinese connection in a minute. <laughs> On the home front, Democrats in the me- in the media are just going ape shit about this Russian collusion, Russian hacking the election story like 24 fucking hours a day. <laughs> and then also uh the president of the president or whatever, the prime minister, the head poobah of China is actually in town to meet with Trump the night that we, that, that we were spawned to, to this. What's going on? Uh, yeah. When we were spawned. The non-standard squad, 1944. World War II. Three weird American soldiers are on a search and rescue mission into the oldest and darkest regions of Europe. A cursed, ever-living warrior, Cyrus the Dead Guy. An experimental war bot, Sergeant Lane McCord. An all-red axe, mysterious rogue with a demon-possessed arm come face-to-face with an army of magically corrupted machine-obsessed elves. A magic hammer wielding Norse ubermensch. And a Nazi wizard, who is a member of the ancient Dark Order of the Shining Hexagon. The Non-Standard Squad 1944 comic is available right now from Stigmata Studios at stigmatastudios.com and on indieplanet.us. It's the Salafian Jihadists. Stigmata Studios presents The Scorpion Strikes. In this comic book, a terrorist called the Scorpion is transported to a secret CIA prison. He quickly turns the tables on the guards and administrators and releases the prisoners. A well-armed anarchist called Constituent Zero assembles a team and fights to take the prison back. The story is a dark political action thriller. The Scorpion's actions set the stage perfectly for the Jin Jihad. Available on Indie Planet. Get more info on the Scorpion Strikes, the Jin Jihad, and other titles at StigmataStudios.com. Meanwhile, in Syria, April 4th, Assad um, drops these chemical bombs on the town of... Oh, man. There's always one that I have a fucking hard time with. Khan Shayakun. Shaka Khan, Khan Shayakhan, controlled by Al, the Al Nusra Front, which is part of the Salafi Jihadists. These are the guys that are a branch of Al Qaeda or Al Qaeda. <laughs> um, so uh, it's this town is controlled by these jihadists, but it still has like innocent women, children, um, and men in there, like uh, Nikki Haley said. Um, so the problem with this whole thing is Trump really ran on the platform of not getting involved in Syria. And he actually, he actually back in the day, (laughs) back in the day, Obama really wanted to get elbow deep in, in Syria and Trump, they, you know, the news dug up these tweets that he tweeted at him saying, you know, well, don't get into Syria. We're in a lot of debt and all this stuff or whatever. (laughs) Um, uh, but, but what I think happened is I think this thing kicked off and I think Trump looked around, you know, to, uh, the Axis and allies section of the lesson plan where he was like, you know, I got this Chinese guy's actually here. I'm going to be meeting with him tonight. South Korea is all talking about, they just had a guy defect from South Korea or from North Korea saying like it's he's obsessed with getting this fucking nuclear weapons <laughs> you know and I, iran's gonna be a big problem we're actually well i'll get into that in a second so i think he looked i think he took a look around and he was like this is a great way to um send a message i'm gonna i'm gonna send a message to some motherfuckers um also uh as one of his one of his spokespeople said is that everything is different when you're when you're a president, like a guy just sending out a tweet going, Hey, don't go into Syria Blah. doesn't have all the Intel and he doesn't have all the messages that he needs to send. So, you know, it's, it is different. So in a weird way, he's also keeping Obama's 
Obama's promise for him when you know when Obama wanted to get into Syria so bad, he actually um he actually said like don't drop any more chemical weapons on your people. Uh that's the re- that's the red line that he drew. You hear a lot about this red line in Obama and Syria. And the guy was like, "Oh yeah, and he dropped another <laughs> he dropped more chemical weapons." It was like, "What up? What's up now?" And um, Obama, you know, he says, like, well, I told him, you know, to knock it off. And they, you know, they knocked it off. So, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's a real leadership problem there. V- vacuum. Um, uh, so, uh, so Trump decides he's going to, he's going to deliver, he's going to deliver his message. And this is the, th- these are the messages that he delivered. We told Syria to, Stop dropping these fucking chemical weapons. We told North Korea to slow its goddamn roll down. It's not going to get any nukes. We told Iran, hey, man, we're actually looking at this deal that John Kerry and you signed. And, you know, pray I don't alter it further. Uh, and we told Russia that they he's better watch his boys and get their shits together. Uh, Trump told the media here at home uh, that he wasn't Putin's punk or like sock puppet or whatever. Like they keep fucking trying to say um, they've been trying to portray him as like a fucking secret Russian agent. <laughs> uh, and we told China, hey, China, you better uh, you better help North Korea s- s- slow down a little bit. They're not going to get. Uh, nuclear weapons. He was actually eating dinner with this guy from China. Like he was looking right into his eyes while these 59 tomahawks were like raining hell down in, in the Syrian desert. And like, think about what kind of, think about how that guy's going to re- receive his message when he figured out what was going on while he was there. You know, he's all there looking at uh, uh, Molina's fucking tits. And he's just like, man, we got, I, I'm really, I gotta, whatever. And uh, when he gets back to his little hotel room, he's going to turn on the TV and he's going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, so earlier that day, unbeknownst to everybody else, as far as I know, the warmonger uh, Hillary Clinton uh, was giving a speech about how misogynist cost her her presidency. I don't I don't I'm not even sure what she's talking about, but. In her speech somewhere, she mentioned that she would do a missile strike on Syria. You're like, why are you calling her a warmonger? She's a Democrat. <laughs> you're like, you need to take into consideration that, you know, when Obama took office, we were bombing two countries. When he left, we were bombing eight. <laughs> now we're bombing nine. But, um, you know, we would have been bombing nine anyways because she just straight up said I would shoot him with the missiles. And also, I call her a warmonger, really, because of that clip. Uh, when they asked her about Gaddafi and she's all like, she's got that robot thing in her eye and she's like, <laughs> God, fucking goofy fucking smile on her face. And she's like, we came, we saw and he died. Blah, 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 blah. So, um, I'm like, that is a, that's a fucking crazy James Bond character. Like that, that's fucking banana. Anyhow. Uh, so we figured out what air base, uh, this plane flew out of. We, Probably had some kind of intel saying that the chemical, the the weapons of mass destruction, that's what they call them, um, also was in a depot um, there at this at this air base. So uh, what they did is they wound up notifying Congress. They briefed 24 key members of Congress, and then they did um, what's called a deconfliction notice. <laughs> Which, like I said, if I had a band, I would name it Deconfliction Notice, or maybe just Deconfliction. And I'd make I work an X in there, F L I X I O N Deconfliction. <laughs> uh, deconfliction Notice is basically when you send a notice to all your kind of allies or neutral parties, and you're like, "Hey, we are about to, we're fucking coming in, <laughs> we're coming in, boot." Ass kickers first. So uh, they sent these deconfliction notices to Canada, Australia, probably some others, and Russia. They let Russia know, hey, we understand you might have some boots on the ground. We would like you to move those boots on the ground so we don't hurt any of your people while we're serving this bitch up. The USS Ross and the USS Porter fired 59 tomahawks into um, into Syria. This is the first time the U.S. has ever attacked Syria in any way. That's what they say. I find that hard to believe, but 
That's the official word, so we're going to stick to that. <laughs> we destroyed a bunch of planes. Uh, they say seven. We say 20. <laughs> the bo- bloop of shitload of hangers, soldiers. Uh, we say a, we say a lot. They say four. Uh, and probably some chemical weapons um, along the way. Uh, um, so... <clears throat> Mission accomplished. Every, all of our people were were home. We fucking p- punished some aggressors. Hey, look, if you ask me, when I seen the new, when I seen the news and I saw that we did this, I was like, oh fuck, man. I thought we were staying out of Syria, Trump. That's what you fucking said. But as I dig deeper into this, I think that I understand what, what the deal is now. Um, so let's talk about um. Let's talk about the reaction heard around the world. Uh, Syria was like, it's outrageous. It's outrageous aggression. It's uncalled for faulty intelligence. Um, they they li- actually likened it to the 2003 ra- invasion of Iraq. Uh, Russia. They talked to uh, Dmitry Medvedev. I don't know if you guys remember this guy. He's the prime minister of Russia. He was the guy uh, right before Obama's reelection campaign. Uh, he was the guy that they were sitting down talking about, like nuclear disarmament or something, like reduction of nuclear arms or whatever. And Obama didn't understand that his mic was still hot, and he was like, "Yo," <laughs> he was like, "Yo, Medley, uh, let." Uh, Putin, no, let Vladimir know that, uh, as soon as this election's over and I win, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be able to be a lot more flexible. <laughs> and of course you probably don't even know that they never made it to the news. Uh, I'm sure you can find YouTube's about it or whatever, but yeah. And he didn't call him medley. I just made that up struggling to put some humor into this story, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> he was like, yo medley tell Vlad that, you know, I'll be a lot more flexible. I can be a lot more flexible after I get reelected, <laughs> which what the fuck does that say? You want to talk about Russian collusion? Look at that fucking sentence right there. Um, yeah. Okay. So this guy Medley, <laughs> he claimed that we we're, we're within one inch of clashing with Russian military. In fact, the Russians actually turned some old bullshit cold war era boat towards the Ross and the Porter. Like, Whatever. I see people on social media. Oh my God! It's there. It's gonna be a naval battle. Just calm your fucking shit down. In retrospect, fifty nine missiles is a very limited action. Uh, the deconfliction notice probably saved a lot of fucking lives. And uh, no one's gonna go to war with us for a shitty air force base in the middle of the fucking desert. <laughs> you know. Uh. Uh. I mentioned Sun Tzu earlier and how he said that uh, war is just um, war and military action is a tool of politics and uh, work towards political end. The idea was back then there was no such thing as limited warfare. You'd fucking destroyed enough people to where the citizens of whatever kingdom you were fucking up was like, hey, man, maybe it's not worth this king. And they put they put political pressure on the king from the other side. That's kind of what he's talking about. But in a geopolitical sense. You know, the most powerful thing, the most powerful part of what this thing, this whole action did was it let the White House, um, let the White House loose. Uh, it let, uh, it, it let, uh, Nikki Haley off the chain. So you have the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. <laughs> stand here, um, looking these other, looking these other, ambassadors in the eye you can see when she's reading she'll fucking turn and look right at the fucking russians what she's talking about i got a couple minute little thing here um and this is the speech uh this is the address that i've been uh, reading from but here's the end of it and i want to know <laughs> it's like, like let, uh, she's great watch this but it's even more than that russia is supposed to be a guarantor of the removal of chemical weapons from syria the guy just looks down. He was like, oh, fuck, Russia here we go. Russia is supposed to have removed all the chemical weapons from Syria. But obviously, that has not happened, as innocent Syrians continue to be murdered in chemical attacks. Let's think about the possible reasons for Russia's failure. It could be 
that Russia is knowingly allowing chemical weapons to remain in Syria. It could be that Russia has been incompetent in its efforts to remove the chemical weapons. Or it could be that the Assad regime is playing the Russians for fools. Mic drop. Telling them that there are no chemical weapons, all the while stockpiling them on their bases. The world is waiting for the Russian government to act responsibly in Syria. The world is waiting for Russia to reconsider its misplaced alliance with Bashar Assad. The United States will no longer wait for Assad to use chemical weapons without any consequences. Those days are over. But now we must move to a new phase, a drive toward a political solution to this horrific conflict. We expect the Syrian regime and its allies to take the UN political process seriously, something they have not done up until this point. We expect Russia and Iran to hold their ally accountable and abide by the terms of the ceasefire. We expect this council to speak loudly and forcefully when the regime or its allies undermine the political process and countless of our own resolutions. The United States took a very measured step. Very Russia. measured step, like I said. We are prepared to do more, but we hope that will not be necessary. Who let those fucking dogs out? That's what I want to know. So, um, so that's, uh, hope I helped you kind of sort through this mess and, uh, figure out what's what and understand that it's really in the hindsight. It's not that big of a deal. You got some bad actors. No, they know they're not doing the right thing. <laughs> Someone just had to smack them down a little bit on the, on the ball court. You know what I'm saying? So look, uh, this has been the Abercast. Like I said, keep an eye out because another episode is going to drop this week. Um, we are going to drop another episode this week, uh, episode twenty-seven, probably. <laughs> if I can get my naming conventions, if you look, you scroll down, I'm, it's all fucked up. Anyhow, uh, so check that out. If you're looking for something to listen to next, go to society-thirteen.com. Check out a wide range of. Um, of shows that we have to offer you guys on there. Um, check out my work on the wicked library. I did the cover for this week's story <sighs> and, um, yeah, find me on Twitter. I'm dying to hear from you guys. I'm trying to figure out who the audience is. Uh, I'm happy. I look at the, uh, I look at the, the numbers on the, on the society 13, network. And yesterday I actually came in second. This is the first time ever. So, you know, I love it. Pump it up. Reach out to me. Tell me what you like about the show. Tell me what you don't like about the show. Go to the f Facebook page, the Abercast Facebook page. I'll put some of these videos. I'll put some videos up there for this and for the other episode that's going to drop this week. Oh, God. Gaseous. Um, uh, Stigmata Studios on Facebook. Stigmata Studios on Twitter. Johnny X on Twitter. J O N N Y A X X on Twitter. Stigmata Studios on Insta. Graham. Uh, I do a lot of process shots. If you're interested in the art side of the house, <laughs> um, yeah. So there it is, motherfuckers. Hit me up, and uh, we'll see you later on this week. For uh, I don't know if I want to spoil it just yet. No, I don't. I'm not going to spoil it. Just do the thing. Oh, we didn't even get through all the reads this time. Take control of your destiny. Understand your past. Put your present in context. And know your future with a twist. Check out the designs and watch the videos about Abracas Tarot Card Deck on abracast.com. When you order a deck, get a free exclusive bonus tarot card. Also, sign into the mailing list to get a free ebook about the Abracast tarot card deck and other bonus content. Visit the storefront on abracast.com. Welcome to the Red Horse Radio Abercast. This is the exclusive portion of the Red Horse Radio Show. Uh, if you are listening to this, you all know what this is. So, um, without further delay, let me tell you a quick story here. Um, last night, uh, I, I always, like, I have a couple different workspaces. 
Uh, so last night I was working um, actually in my living room and I had the big Lebowski playing and I don't, I'm not watching it, you know, cause I'm working, I'm, my head's down, I'm drawing, you know, I tend to like to watch remove, I rewatch movies that I've seen this way because I already kind of know what's going on with them. Um, so I've seen the big Lebowski probably dozens of times and, you know, just this one instance, I don't know, maybe I had uh, one too many drinks or just the right amount of drinks, or maybe my headspace was just right. But during a conversation that, uh, Brant, who is the big Lebowski's or Mr. Lebowski's, uh, like personal assistant, it's talking to the dude and they said something that kind of like made me kind of like, what was, what's that? I never realized that before. And then later on in the movie, they kind of recall to it and I kind of put a whole bunch of stuff together and I had to rewatch the whole, I got my set of tarot cards out. Uh, I use, I have a, the weight rider deck is like my go-to. I have a couple of different decks, but I, the weight rider deck is like the classical deck. If you're not familiar with tarot cards, whenever you see them in movies or whatever, it's generally a version of the weight rider tarot deck. So anyhow, not to get geeky on anybody. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, I got my tarot card deck out. I restarted the movie and I started watching it all over again with this different kind of eye. So I set aside my work. I'm actually paying attention to this whole movie. And I found a couple correlations to the tarot cards that might be interesting to everybody. It's, it certainly was interesting to me. And I found enough correlations to me just with one viewing and, um, uh, you know, not thinking about it too hard. You know, I'm sure that there's, um, you know, I'm sure there's more stuff that I missed. Right. But I found enough stuff to where I'm like, Hey, the Coen brothers are like, it, this is a joke or they're like, they're in on it. Like they did this on purpose. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my drink down for a second and I'm going to grab my notebook and we're going to go through some of these, uh, I'm calling this talk the tarot of the big Lebowski we got to get our mind right. Okay. So to start out with, I always, I guess I just always assumed that there was hidden meetings in the big Lebowski. Cause there's just some stuff that's it, like in context is just seems kind of funky or something. Right. So I didn't know if it was like an allegory, maybe about world war two, <laughs> you know, they, they make a lot of uh, metaphors between the, or comparisons between the Vietnam war and the Gulf war. But it seemed like with the, the nihilists or the Nazis, the Eastern European uh, German guys, like maybe there was room for that to be open. But I don't know. And right off the bat, uh, hold on. right off the bat, there's a um, there's a weird thing where, you know, the dudes uh, signs his check. He's at Ralph's and he signs his check for 69 cents. And the date of the check is. 9-11 so it's like this movie's always getting called up on like com conspiracy w theory websites about pr uh predictive programming and all this stuff when actually really i think it has more to do with uh george uh bush senior's nwo speech the new world order speech so anyhow that gets into it and there might be multiple layers i don't fucking know but we're gonna concentrate on this tarot card thing so i just needed to get the 9-11 thing right out of the right out of the way pack it up put it away um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> the, uh, strangers talking about dude and he's like the laziest guy in Los Angeles, you know, the dude and like it cuts to the dude and he's in this totally clean environment, you know, and he's in his robe and he's like w just wandering around and he's got, uh, he's got two half and half containers in his hand. And I think that this is the first tarot card. Uh, I, I believe that this is the temperance card. The temperance card is, you know, she's like an angel and she's in a robe and she's pouring water. She's pouring half the water from one cup into another cup. And I think that that's the 50, 50 metaphor with, with the robe. Uh, so I thought that that was really interesting. And as soon as I seen it, as soon as I was like, Oh, it's 50, 50, it's half and half. That's what it is. It's half and half. Um, that that's the joke. That's the, that's the visual joke with the, the half and half is pouring water, half the water out of one cup into, into another cup. So there it is. Right. 
<clears throat> so we go through the movie and then he gets attacked by the by the uh not the nihilist but he gets attacked by the thugs the chinaman that that pisses on his on his rug and uh i was like oh is this a baptism you know he gets like he's baptized in his in this basin full you know by the end it's full of the milk that he bought for his white russians and that's another thing with him uh with the dude when he's being the temperance card he's mixing he's always mixing drinks he's always mixing this this white russian uh so I, or caucasian as he calls them so i thought that that was that was interesting um we move to uh where he's he's bowling and he's doing like this warm up exercise that i've never seen anybody do which is where he's like he takes like the he's uh crucified he's like being crucified just bending over at the back like with his arms out uh so i thought that that was interesting and actually if you look at it from that point of view there's actually so there's a you know if you agree or if you're willing to go down the road with me that the him getting dunked in the toilet was a was a baptism and uh and he's like showing like he's the christ figure or like the fucking uh percival or whatever um that you know he's you know he's mimicking being being crucified there's all there's also uh a death and resurrection of the dude in the movie so we'll get we'll get to that i'll point that out where we go all right so dude gets mixed up in some trouble and he decides he's going to go to mr lebowski's house to ask for a rug or money for for a rug i think is the original plan Okay, so this is what set me off on this whole on this whole wild wacky journey. Um uh he's met by by Brant, who's played by the late Philip Seymour Hoffman. And uh Brant, it's like he's got like a little trophy room. He's he's making the dude wait in. <clears throat> and he's going and they're going through and they're looking at like all of Mr. Lebowski's uh things, like all of his like trophies or whatever. And he points and he says, hey, look, Mr. Lebowski's won the key to the city of, I can't remember what it, Pasadena maybe or something, I don't know. He won the keys to the city. Uh, and it's like this huge, like cartoonishly big fucking like key. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, and here's like him with uh, Nancy, Nancy Reagan. And the, the dude goes, Pope John? And I thought like, wow, that, you know, that was the thing that kind of like put it in the, put it in the back of my mind later he makes another pope joke which made me which was what made me be like i gotta look at this whole thing over again but anyhow so we'll stick with the big key and where he goes pope john and the big key is because in some versions of the tarot not the weight rider but in some versions the hierophant card uh which is uh the fifth card of the major arcana uh the pope is holding this big gigantic key now in the weight rider deck, it's not a big gigantic key. It's two keys crossed laying at his feet. And this is a, a, a symbol of the, the Vatican. It's a, it's a symbol of papal power along with like three crowns and like the, the, um, staff with the, the cross of Lorraine on it. So, I mean, it's not the only Vatican symbol, right? Like, look at it. They're full of fucking symbology, but the cross keys. So I was like, okay, well, there's a key, there's a pope joke that doesn't make sense in context and um uh and this pope joke that comes out later where he's talking to him in the limousine and he goes i think it's in the limousine where he goes uh does the pope shit in the woods <laughs> anyhow so uh back to this thing so this is the first meeting between the dude and mr lebowski and uh the door opens and mr lebowski wheels in because he's a cripple he's handicapped whatever whatever you're supposed to call him nowadays he rolls in and, and on either side of him entering the door there are pillars and on the pillars are these statues but you'll know or you should know <clears throat> uh refer back to my um episode of the main show with uh steve folan uh, we we're talking about occult symbolism in pop culture or whatever high rituals um whenever you see two pillars you know that sh you should pay pay attention what what it is so then when you look at the hierophant card what i said the fifth card in the major arcana the pope sitting there he's got the two keys <laughs> at his feet and there's and he's uh flanked by two by two pillars now these pillars you know uh represent uh 
Jaquin and Boaz, the two pillars that are outside of the uh, the Temple of Solomon. Uh, and they, they're everywhere in the tarot. Not everywhere, because it wouldn't be special. But they're like, they're, it's like a Morris code of these pillars sim- symbolism throughout the whole, throughout the tarot. You got two, you got two towers on the, uh, the sun card. You, ha- you actually have two pillars with a, with the letter B and the letter J on them and the high priestess card. Um, justice has two pillars. So they're like everywhere. Right. But the hierophant card, which is also the Pope card. That's what another word. A hierophant is a person that hears the word of God and interprets it for the fucking people that can't understand it. Right. So it's like, it's Pope, it's priestly class. <laughs> so they're telling you like this guy is the, is like, is the, like he, we're identifying him with the Pope. Does it make sense? Okay. Yeah. We got everything. <clears throat> um, so later, this is like the, the call to act, uh, uh, uncle Joe Campbell. We call this the call to action where the hero gets his mission. Uh, sometimes he doesn't take it right away, but the dude does. He says, this is going to be easy money and I'm just going to fucking do it. Right. And he's in his, he's in his house and he's like doing Tai Chi. <laughs> he's like doing Tai Chi. And he's got a white Russian in his hand again, being, this is where he passes from being temperance to being the fool, which is the hero at the beginning of his journey. So, uh, he's got the white rush in his hand, which on, on the full card, the full card is zero of the major arcana card. Number zero is, I don't know if the zero is an actual number, but it's card zero in the major arcana. And he's actually kind of posing like the dude in this Tai Chi pose. And instead of a white rush in his hand, he's got a white flower in his hand. But if you look at the card, there's a couple other things going on. That's going to, that's going to take place in the movie. One is there's a little dog nipping at his heel. And this is Walter's ex wife's dog. Um, and then he's also got like luggage. He's got like one of those hobo sticks, like the stick with like the handkerchief with his, his, whatever's his belongings in it. <clears throat> and this is going to be, um, the the ringer bag with Walter's whites. So the setting the the dude up, this is the beginning of, of his hero's quest. He's been baptized. He's ready to go. <laughs> he's, he's ready to go. Um, <clears throat> then there's this weird thing with, uh, uh, the Jesus, uh, Quintano. Now I, I'm, I struggle with, the character, the, <laughs> the Jesus, <laughs> he's probably the, my favorite part of the whole movie. Um, but I have a hard time dealing with him cause I see him in like two different ways. One is, um, with all his rings and shit and his fucking cocaine nail, uh, uh, not with his cocaine nail. I just said, I don't know why I said that with all his rings and him dressed in purple, like, like we see him for the first time. Um, and his name, the Jesus sti- or stitched onto Jesus stitched onto a shirt. You know, I, I'm get, like, I'm like, okay, well this, this is the, the Catholic church, <laughs> you know, like this is, this is the, this is the Catholic church. And, um, and the, it's confirmed like minutes later after he gets done with his speech and it cuts to Walter and the dude talking and Walter's like, yeah, that guy's a pedophile. Uh, when he, like when he moved into Hollywood or wherever, he had to knock on everyone's door in a, so many mile radius cause he's a pederast. Uh, so I'm like, okay, well that is the Vatican. However, when you look at it through this paradigm that I'm exploring about these tarot cards, it gets a little different cause he bowls and then he does like the, he does this weird, like victory dance <laughs> with, you know, it's one of the best parts of the whole movie when he's doing this dance. But if you watch the dance that he does at one point in time, he actually kicks his, I, I don't know which leg, but he kicks one leg behind the other leg and kind of like slaps his heel. And, um, you know, whenever you see one leg tucked behind another leg, it's like the, the hanged man card. However, that doesn't really fit. Quantano's character because because the hangman card is about giving yourself up to something bigger uh or letting the lord J- jesus christ uh will be done the you know god uh you know like you are you are willing to not fight the will of the universe or whatever that's what the card's really kind of about but in this way <laughs> um 
you know, uh, the Jesus doesn't seem like that's what he's about. It actually seems like he's a fixed point in the movie. He doesn't have a character arc. He's there. He's like a, a badass. Everyone's kind of uh, like afraid of him, I guess. Uh, and so I don't know if that's like a joke or like a pun or if I'm reading too much into it. I don't know, but having the guy throw his leg behind his, his back in this contact or his back leg, having him throw his leg behind his other leg. Oh, but like you see this pose on in the hangman card, he's hung by one leg and his other leg kind of limply lays behind his knee of the outstretched aforementioned tied to leg and his arms are bound behind him. This is, you know, you, you, you are, a, you're a slave to the will of God. Um, so may, maybe it's a joke. Maybe I'm not looking at it the right way. I don't know. It's interesting. The leg behind the leg tipped me off. I could, like I said, could be reading too much into it. Um, but his dance was all fucking awesome. Okay. So, uh, then another thing I'm going to note, I, I don't know, this is not really tied to terror, to the tarot cards, but. When uh, he goes to Maud's and Maud fucking like gives him the money shot while flying over him, <laughs> like the sexual reversal, uh, role reversal. And then she walks up and like gives him like a little hanky and she's like, here, you know, clean up, honey, <laughs> clean it, make yourself presentable again. <laughs> oh, God, it's so fucking funny. All right. <clears throat> so we move on to. uh the Hierophant card again. Card five. This is when he gets abducted from one limousine to another limousine, which Brant and Mr. Lebowski are in. And this is when he says the, uh, this is when he says, does a, does the Pope shit in the woods? It, so making a reference to the Pope. And then if you watch that, if you watch the scene again, Mr. Lebowski does this weird uh, finger pose with his hand. Where he's like, uh, he's doing like this two finger kind of like pointing thing. And if you look at the Weight Rider tarot deck, the Hierophant card is is doing the exact same pose with the exact same hand. Exacts. <clears throat> uh, so he goes back and we see him at the, the bowling alley. And it, this is when he starts wearing the sweater. And the sweater has Hebrew, Hebrew letters ar- around it. And I, I've been mimicking Hebrew letters in my comic book work for like 13 fucking years. You'd think that I could, would be fluent in Hebrew right now. I don't, I don't know what the letters are, but they're clearly Hebrew letters wrapped around him, uh, wrapped around like his, like his sleeve area. You don't fucking believe me. Just Google search it. You know, the big Lebowski sweater or dude Lebowski sweater. You'll see it. You'll probably get some answers there too. I don't know. I didn't do that. I, I didn't, I wasn't, motivated enough okay so we got another we got a word joke here we got a word play joke when they go to larry seller's house <clears throat> and they're greeted by uh uh the the mom i guess she's the mom they straight up call her they say her name is pillar which is like pillar I didn't see any pillars in their house, but they could have fucking named her anything. <laughs> and she's like the guardian of the thing. Like, you know, he's got the money they want, you know, and they can't get it. And she's, you know, fiery, you know, Latino Pilar, you know, and that poor guy is fucking just breathing in that fucking iron lung. <clears throat> and then uh, the next thing that happens is, the, my second part, my second favorite part of the movie, where they get the In-N-Out burgers. If you guys never had In-N-Out burgers, you're missing out. Okay, so we get to the psychedelic trippy part of the movie. The gutter, the gutter balls scene where he's going to he gets <clears throat> he gets uh, knocked out or something. He's got this crazy dream where it's like he's building off another. Uh, he's building off of uh, experience he had where he was watching the porno movie with Bunny Lebowski and that Carl dude, which is funny because that links into the very first thing in the movie where dude signs the nine 11 check and uh, George Bush is, is talking. I think it has something to do with the new world order thing. When, uh, when Carl Hungus knocks on the door and Bunny answers it. It's they're they're in their porno they're in their porno movie Log Jammers, 
um, uh, Carl says something like, he's here to fix the cabal. <laughs> now he's got like this crazy European accent, right? But he mispronounces cable and says, I'm here to fix the cabal and the cabal being the new world order. But also is also another joke because, uh, that's a, a cabal is a secretive political group. And that's what he's joined with his other nihilistic friends, like the three, the th- three or four other friends. They would be, they could kind of be the a cabal too. And how I'm very wildly off topic. So the gutter ball scene, uh, on top of the two pillars, the other thing you need to look at when you're looking at these kind of uh, symbols or symbology in pop culture or movies is a checkerboard floor. You know, like you see in like the, on a, in a Mason's temple, you know, like the the black and white checkerboard floor. So gutter balls, it's all over this gutter balls dream. Uh, the whole thing, I think, takes place either in a bowling lane or a black and white checkered uh, um, floor. You know, the black and white is the, you know, the good and the bad of the universe or the spirituality and the materialistic version of the universe or whatever kind of dichotomy you want to funnel into it in context. <clears throat> but this is, <laughs> this is the, this is the part that's funny. Cause it's like, whenever you look at any of the, the pinnacle cards, you know, it's always like somebody holding like a ball or like a disc. So like, there's literally like ball metaphors, like all over this, all over this thing. And then you get the chicks with the the pins on their head and they're bowing and waving and all this other kind of stuff. So the two of pentacles, uh, is one of these cards where it's like, uh, it's got a guy and he's like juggling and it could be like juggling two uh, balls or the two of wands where guys standing there with a wand and he's holding like a globe in his hand. Like he's going to pitch a, uh, a bowling ball and the ace of pentacles, which is a, just this hand coming out of a cloud, holding on to a pentacle. Like it was a, like it was a bowling ball. Um, and then as the dream progresses, he becomes like this phallic symbol and he's like floating down the lane between these, between these ladies legs and uh he rotates he like f- he goes from like a a face down position to a face up position and it's the exact kind of looks like the exact kind of same position as um uh the four of swords now it's not the exact same position because dude has his hands to his side and the the four of swords has his hands kind of like on his chest like he's praying or something like this but it's like the same kind of thing and like on the card, all these swords are kind of like pointing at him, like hung up on the wall. Like uh, they're like the lady's legs sort of, I don't know. I might be overlooking that one or interlooking it or looking at it too, too hard. So the dude dies, uh, he gets martyred (laughs) by, uh, being the, by being the, the ball that smashes into the pins. And, um, the next phase of his, uh, his, his dream, or whatever is when he goes to hell and he's dealing with the, the three nihilists and the three nihilists are, uh, um, the three nihilists are the three of swords. They're dressed in red, uh, and they each have a scissors where the three of swords is this red heart pierced by three arrows. Now the, the scissors also goes back to the things that are painted on mods, uh, or paintings that are hung up on, on mods thing, uh, in her, in her studio, you know, you have this red background and these, in these scissors and like some of them are pointing up, which also kind of looks like the, uh, the two of swords where it's the, the lady blindfolded holding swords up at her shoulders like this, making a V inverted, maybe two of swords. So the dude, uh, a- after he's being chased by the nihilist, he gets resurrected and he's, he gets to have sex with Maud. Which I thought was weird. Like another point of concern with this movie for me was always kind of like the, (laughs) uh, it was always kind of the, um, continuation of the Lebowski bloodline, like a way to keep the bloodline pure was for her to, to fuck, uh, a Lebowski that wasn't too related to, uh, Mr. Lebowski. And after they have sex, like she's, you know, she even makes the, the, the thing like it's, you know, well, first she sends them to get 
his sperm count checked or whatever. And then uh, she said it helps with uh, fertilization or something where she's like rocking back and forth and he fucking spits his white Russian out all over the place. Um, yeah, so I think there's like a weird bloodline thing going there. What do you think? Do you think I'm looking too far into it? Like, why would she just meet this dude and decide to have sex and a baby with him? I think it's because his name was Lebowski, Lebowski. So, uh, they fight the nihilists. Uh, Donnie, unfortunately, perishes due to a heart attack. And then we see Walter uh, mimicking the star card, which is the the 17th card of the, of the major arcana. And that card, there's actually a lot of wild stuff going on in that card. But he's basically, like, doing the same thing. And he's, like, dumping that, the ashes um, I'm not going to get into the crazy stuff cause it has, it's work related. So, um, yeah, so those are the, those are the things that I found just kind of bumbling through. And there was a couple that I put away cause I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm down with this or if I'm looking too much into it. Like the queen of pentacles, uh, she's like sitting on her, on her throne. She's kind of looking down and she's holding the pentacle, uh, in her hand, kind of like a bowling ball. And it kind of reminds me of dude when he's got his half of his hair tied up. Like I think the first time we see him in the, in the bowling alley. Oh, and then I already talked about the two of swords. Um, uh, the scissor imagery. And then there's also the five of swords. And there's this weird part of the movie where they're showing, I guess they're showing how intense and how tied to the rules of the game Walter is, uh, where Smokey slips his line over the, over the, oh, he slips his toe over the line during league play and Walter freaks out about it. And he says, you you slipped your toe over the line, Smokey, you know, and he actually fucking pulls like a nine millimeter out on him on the lanes. If you pull your fucking shit out on the lanes, I will take it from you and I will put it in your ass and pull the trigger till it goes click. So he threatens, uh, he threatens Smokey with his, with his gun and Smokey says, okay, if I make it a zero, whatever. But there's this tarot card, the five of swords where the guy's walking and his like toe is like right on the sword. Like it's real close to the sword. His toes pretty close to the sword his toe is pretty far away from the sword but it still was enough for me to be like man maybe i'll put this in the m column <laughs> okay so that has been red horse radio the abercast thank you for tuning in to the gnostic punk podcast uh where i get to sit down and get a little freaky. <laughs> uh, so if you enjoyed that show, I appreciate it. Hook me up on Twitter. I don't do a lot of show notes and stuff for these, for these episodes. So um, thank you. And we love you. And I'll see you next week. I'll come up with another fun topic. Uh, but if you like this or if you want to debate with me or tell me I'm full of shit, fucking find me on uh, Twitter at uh, J O N N Y A X X. If you're listening to this and you're in the exclusive section of the website, you already know how to get a hold of me, so just do it, man. Just do it. Thank you for listening, and we hope that you enjoyed the show. Please send an email or find us on social media and let us know what you think about the show. We would appreciate it if you would give us a five-star rate and review wherever you find your favorite podcasts. You can find Stigmata Studios, Graphic, Novels, and Comic Books at Apricast.com.